Okay. Yeah, well, good morning, everybody, and greetings from Asbury Park. Uh, my name is John Moore, I'm the mayor of Asbury Park. And before I introduce our great congressman, uh, Congressman Frank Pallone, I'd like to give a shout out to Michael Manzella and James Bonanno, who are transportation planners. And uh, we're here about EV charging and the bipartisan bill for more EV charging throughout the city, district, state, and country, which is fantastic. We can't thank the congressman enough. Uh, Asbury Park, again, with Michael and James, got ahead of the curve, and we've been very proactive with uh, charging stations, which we have behind us here. We have downtown. We have on the west side. So, again, that's a little bit of Asbury Park, and it's my always my honor to introduce the great congressman from our district, Congressman Frank Pallone. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to Mayor and the, and the City Council. Uh, Asbury Park is always uh, sort of the, the place that's the most innovative in trying to, you know, move forward and come up with things that help people um, in, in a very special way. So I'm no surprise that we're here today because they have these uh, charging stations, which is uh, a cooperative effort, as the Mayor said, with Green Spot. Um, we're going to uh, hear from Greenspot after me. Uh, but one of the things that we're hoping is that with this program, well, not that we're hoping, is with this program, there will be more charging stations uh, in communities as well. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what we're doing. I have to say, though, Mayor, when I came here and I said those, I, you'll know what I'm talking about, but why I won't tell anybody. Those are green and white, those stations. <laughs> Long branch colors. <laughs> <laughs> We used to. We well noted. <laughs> In any case, I wanted to say um, we started out. Uh, there have been many initiatives at the federal level uh, to try to move towards uh, encouraging electric vehicles. Uh, you know, both the domestic manufacturing of electric vehicles, uh, having people buy electric vehicles. And of course, the key to all that is having the charging stations, because if people don't have uh, charging stations, you know, where they're traveling around uh, and in their community, uh, you know, then that becomes a disincentive to move to electric vehicles, uh, you know, whether it be for automobiles, trucks, uh, um, you know, buses, whatever. And um, so that's why building up a national and statewide uh, electric charging station uh, infrastructure is so important. And the main um, and the main uh, way that we've done that is, as the mayor said, with the bipartisan infrastructure bill, uh, which the Congress passed and the president signed in November. Um, the total, I think, for that is about uh, there's about 15 billion dollars in that uh, infrastructure bill for uh, to build a national and statewide electric charging uh, electric charging station. Um, infrastructure network and the first installment of that for New Jersey um, was just announced uh, within the last week or so uh, 15 uh, well there's 15 billion in the um, in the total bill uh, but New Jersey got its first installment on February 10th which was uh, which was 15 million dollars I don't want to confuse the total amount in the whole bill for the country is 15 billion on February 10th uh, the president announced that New Jersey will receive 15 million to build out the state's electric vehicle charging infrastructure. We expect over five years, New Jersey will get about 104 million dollars. So this is the first installment. And the idea is to build, is for the New Jersey to put together, or each state, but I'll talk about our state, to put together a plan by August, uh, which then gets approved by the federal government, I think by the end of September. So we would start, even at the end of this year, starting to see uh, some of these uh, being put in place, assuming the New Jersey plan is approved. Now that's the, the statewide plan that was announced. Uh, but there's also an element in this mayor uh, which will follow up of additional money and a, and, a, and a competitive grant program where towns like Asbury Park 
uh, can apply as well. Right. So, so this first uh, tranche, I know I sound like a bureaucrat here, this first tranche was for the statewide plan, but there is going to be a, a grant program that towns can apply to as well. Uh, but of course, you could also be part of the statewide plan, right? In other words, I wouldn't be surprised if the state decides, for example, that they want to put them at all the train stations, right? Maybe in Asbury uh, or along, um, you know, major highways. So um, that's, that's going to be all developed over the next uh, six months or so. Um, but I mean, the obvious reason why this is important is because we do want to get away from uh, fossil fuels, right? In other words, we know the price of gasoline. We know people spend a lot of money on gasoline. Uh, and we know that it uh, pollutes and causes uh, more greenhouse gases into uh, go into the atmosphere, and that results in climate change. Of course, yesterday was warm, today's cold, so, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, the bottom line is uh, we have to participate in this, not only nationally, but internationally, in an effort to try to reduce the impact of greenhouse gases. And so to the extent that we can move towards electric vehicles and electric charging stations, that plays a major role. But it also saves money. Uh, you know, so some people have said, well, you, you know, if I buy an electric car, it's expensive. But the bottom line is, as more and more people purchase them and more produced, uh, the, the price will come down. And you save a lot of money, obviously, on gasoline. So I think it's a good thing for the economy. It's a good thing for the climate. Um, and there's so, and it also creates jobs. Um, one of the thing, one of the uh, purposes of the bipartisan infrastructure bill is to try to bring more manufacturing back to the United States, and this will help in that respect uh, as well. So I've talked enough. Uh, I, we have uh, Green Spot, which is the the, the group that put uh, these two charging stations here in cooperation with Asbury Park, and then we have some of the environmental representatives, environmental group representatives who will speak as well. So from Green Spot we have Joe De Simone, who's the Chief Operating Officer. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Congressman. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me this morning. Uh, as Congressman mentioned, I'm the, the Chief Operating Officer at Green Spot. Uh, we are an EV operating uh, company. We install end-to-end -end, uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructure and we're worldwide so we've done that uh, at over 200 locations uh, around the world and the united states uh, our biggest base for our charging infrastructure actually has been here in new jersey um, so we're, we're happy to see more stations go on the ground especially in parts of the community like asbury park um, and, and we're about to expand expand into other areas of the of the state as well so it's funding like this that really helps us um, do that. Um, without the help of grant funding from the government, we really wouldn't be able to make as much progress as, as we have. We installed our first stations in Jersey City in 2014, um, and that included a total of, of 19 stations. And then that was our first pilot. And from there, over the past eight or so years, we've, we've um, started operations in Israel, um, as well as other uh, five other states in, in the United States. The city of Asbury Park has been a partner of ours uh, for about the past four years. Um, we have, you know, two sites down now. We have plans for a third location on Springwood Ave uh, between Union and, and Sylvan Avenues. And we're excited to, to open up that location as well. This, this location behind us is um, a two station uh, spot. Uh, really servicing four parking spots so four vehicles can actually charge at at one time and then throughout new jersey we we have other partnerships with other local municipalities um, and, and organizations uh, we really will use this grant funding um, and, and we'll put it to good use um, to really expand what we've we've already done throughout new jersey um, to, to other parts of of the state it's really clear to us that New Jersey is focused on the right things to help companies like ours build the infrastructure that's needed to support communities and it's really been a pleasure to work with New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection and DOT um, throughout this process. Electric charging infrastructure development is, is really a complex task. Um, it really requires an end-to-end -end company to do it and, and it's, it's an expensive undertaking so it's grant funding um, such as this from the DOT that's really helping us offset 
uh, the cost of that infrastructure and to be able to do it at a more rapid pace. So essentially the way we look at grant funding is instead of just doing, you know, say a hundred stations, it actually doubles the amount of, uh, you know, infrastructure that we're able to, to install. These timely investments help advance EV charging networks that support regional economies by creating jobs. They also help businesses grow by bringing more traffic to their locations. And the grants also spur innovation across the state and the country. It helps us confront climate change and address inequities that exist throughout different communities, both large and small in the state, and provide electric vehicle charging to people that normally wouldn't have access to it. This really helps them decrease their overall transportation cost. The cost of electricity is, is overall going to be less than the cost of gasoline over time. And the cost of electric vehicles will start to decrease over time as well. So at the end of the day, I think it's really up to all of us to make changes that provide an everlasting benefit to our communities in the future. And it's federal programs like DOT's National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program that pave the way for further progress. With that said, I wanted to thank everyone uh, today for coming out. I know it's a chilly day, um, and, and we appreciate everyone being here. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. And thanks for all that you're doing with Asbury and other towns as well. Um, Doug O'Malley's next. Uh, he's from Environment, New Jersey. What's your title? Executive Director? <laughs> yeah, Whatever. that's what that works. <laughs> Chief Puba. <laughs> Well, well, thank you so much, Mayor, and, and, and thank you so much, Congressman, and, and to my environmental allies here. Uh, it is always good to be in Asbury Park. Uh, you know, it's obviously not a fair weather friend uh, today. And part of the reason it's great to be in Asbury Park is because Asbury Park as a city has proven to be a leader on clean energy and on the environment uh, and on electric vehicles. And it's crazy to think, but it's only been two and a half years since the mayor and the congressman uh, and a set of uh, environmental leaders uh, were at a slightly different spot from here, about three blocks away in front of the Asbury, helping to uh, you know, break ground on the green spot uh, chargers over there, right? So you know, this is an evolution that we've, you know, we, we want to be able to speed up the transition to electric vehicles. And a big way we can speed that up is making more electric vehicle chargers available. Right now, a majority of New Jersey car, dr car drivers are interested in getting behind an EV, but they're concerned about range anxiety. They're worried about where to plug in. And obviously, we want to be able to make charging an electric vehicle as easy as going to a gas station. Because ultimately, you know, when you go to the pump and you, you're, you, you, uh, you know, pay for gas, you're paying through the roof. And you're also contributing to one of the largest sources of climate pollution in the state and the country, and that's the cars and, and trucks we drive. We know that electric vehicles are superior customer experience. EV driver, drivers love them, but we just want to make it easier for everyone to get behind the wheel. And, and I can't emphasize enough how important the leadership of Congressman Pallone was to pass the bipartisan infrastructure law that was a, over a billion dollars to fix our nation's infrastructure. This uh, $15 million down payment on EV chargers is just the beginning, right? Because we're gonna need a lot more dollars up and down uh, all, all the roads across New Jersey to make it easier uh, to plug in. So not just the parkway, not just the turnpike, but more communities like Asbury Park. Um, and I just wanna remind people, uh, you, you know, you don't have to be a, a football fan, obviously, to watch the Super Bowl, but there were seven commercials for electric vehicles. That was more than $40 million spent by a wide set of car manufacturers because car dealers, uh, car dealers and auto manufacturers are making EVs. They are investing billions of dollars in EVs, right? So if you want a, a minivan, you want a truck, uh, you want a sports car, you can find that for electric vehicles, but we ultimately need to be able to get the places to plug in. And the reason, as I mentioned, this is so critical is that, you know, it is cold today. It's supposed to be cold in February, right? But, you know, yesterday it was it was hitting 60. We are seeing a world that is warming, and uh, obviously that is a huge impact for the shore. And one of the other times we usually come uh, to Asbury Park in the winter is fighting offshore drilling. And so one of the best ways we can fight offshore drilling is to ban drilling off our coasts, but also is to electrify the cars and trucks that we drive, because that's going to mean less air pollution. It's going to mean you don't have to visit a gas station, uh, and it, it's going to mean that we're putting 
uh, where we're fighting climate change by putting less carbon pollution into the air. That's a win-win-win for everybody, and it would only happen because of the bipartisan infrastructure law. So that's why we're so thankful to be freezing here today, uh, because Congressman Malone, this is uh, this was not easy. So we are very grateful. We're very grateful to Greenspot and everyone at Asbury Park, and Mayor. And uh, let me uh, turn it back to you, Congressman. Thanks again. We should have had this yesterday, I guess. Yeah, yes, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doug. So next is Angeli Ramos, who's the uh, new uh, or relatively new, I guess, right? <laughs> Executive Director of the New Jersey Sierra Club. Thanks. Thank you, Congress. Um, good morning, everybody. Yes, I'm freezing as well. <laughs> um, um, so as the Congressman mentioned, I'm Angeli Ramos. I'm the new director for the New Jersey Sierra Club. Um, thank you, Congressman, for the opportunity to speak today um, and as well for your leadership leadership as chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee and for ensuring that New Jersey gets its fair share of money to continue the most important transition of our century, which is a transition out of fossil fuels. This morning, we woke up to terrible news. We woke up to the fact that Russia has invaded Ukraine. Aside from the horror that this is for the people of Ukraine, this is an abuse of power that is already generating a catastrophic cascade effect onto the entire world by destabilizing not just our economic markets, but our energy markets. The second thing I read this morning was the fact that the Brent crude oil index reached $100 per barrel. Last night, for the first time since 2014, as Russian forces launch an attack on Ukraine. Now, I don't know about you, but I am tired of depending on a highly volatile fossil fuel market that's completely intertwined to politics and war. This is why this step into building a more robust network of EV chargers in New Jersey is imperative and so necessary. It, let, it allow us to keep breaking away from fossil fuels, it let out, allow us to be more energy independent, and of course, it allows us to reduce carbon pollution while breathing a cleaner air. This infrastructure will pave the way to more green jobs, to a green economy, and away from bad air quality days, away from overburdened communities suffering from enormous amounts of diesel exhaust, and away from diesel fumes in the cabins of our children's school buses. This is a necessary step in order to deal with our climate crisis. I cannot wait for the imaginable day when we see more electric cars on the roads than gasoline and diesel. I thank you, Congressman, for your leadership and your work on, on this um, very necessary move. And I'm looking forward to the EV future. Thank you. Thank you, Angela, thank you. So next we have Jen Souter. Is that, am I pronouncing yep. it right? Yep. Jen from New Jersey Clean Cities Coalition. How come you were standing back there? Yeah. Asbury That's Park residents. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> of course. <laughs> thank you, Congressman, and thank you everybody for being here. Um, here on behalf of the New Jersey uh, Clean Cities Coalition, and we want to thank the Congressman for his leadership. And this is such an important part of everyone said to the transition um, to electric vehicles. And we're so excited to have this here in Asbury Park. We want to thank all the partners who have made this happen. Um, and also as a resident of Asbury Park, it's really important uh, as has been brought up to have accessibility to this type of infrastructure so that eventually electric vehicles will be an option for everyone. And uh, we're really excited to have all the, all the stations that we have now and looking forward to the ones in the future and not just here in Asbury Park, but across the state. So thank you again to all for being here and, uh, and we look forward to the next step. Thank you, Jen. And I, I you know, it's, it's good to have you too, because I think it points out that um, in Asbury, um, you know, the people themselves, um, of course the mayor and the council are their representatives, but the people themselves um, often speak out and would like to do and try to do things that are uh, environmentally oriented. I've seen that on so many occasions, not only your, the government, but also the, the actual residents. Um, and last but not least is Kai Mateo, who's with the New Jersey League of Conservation Voters. Kai. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good cold morning to all of you. As Congressman Pallone said, my name is Kai Mateo. I'm the federal climate campaign manager for the New Jersey League of Conservation Voters. And I want to thank Congressman Pallone, our environmental allies, 
Mayor, um, for uh, having this conversation here today. Uh, transitioning to electric vehicles, as we've heard today, is critical to building a, cr a clean economy, transitioning to green energy and reducing our climate emissions. Um, transportation, as we've discussed today, is the most polluting sector of our nation's economy, so it's critical that we're seeing investments uh, to transition to electric vehicles to meet the challenge of the climate disaster. Uh, one other reason why this is important is environmental justice. New Jersey has the worst air quality in the nation. As we've heard here today, uh, fossil fuel burning vehicles contribute to that, leading to uh, the exacerbation of health conditions such as asthma that disproportionately impact the most vulnerable members of our communities, those children and people of color who are, live in economically disadvantaged cities and neighborhoods. Investing in electric vehicles, as we see here today, also makes good economic sense, allows people to create good union jobs, uh, building out this infrastructure. And we want to thank Congressman Pallone for bringing uh, the bipartisan infrastructure law to fruition that allows us to see the beginning of this transition. Uh, as wonderful as the bipartisan infrastructure law is, however, uh, and the one, over $100 million of investments in electric vehicles that New Jersey is expected to see over the next five years, it is just a first step. It's just a down payment. President Biden has set an ambitious goal of building over 500,000 electric vehicle charging stations nationwide by the year 2030. The investments in electric vehicles in the infrastructure law would account for 15% of that, so it's a great down payment, but we need more federal investment. That's why it's critical that leaders like uh, Congressman Pallone, the allies we have here today, keep fighting for the president's full climate agenda so we can fully build out the electric uh, vehicle infrastructure we need. Thank you all uh, for having me, and I'll turn it back to you, Congressman. Thank you, Kai. And as Kai and others mentioned, I mean, we are going to keep fighting not only, well, first of all, this is only a down payment of the total, as I mentioned before, uh, under this bipartisan infrastructure for electric vehicles. More and more of that funding will come out over the next few years. But in addition to that, we do, we're still going to fight hard for a overall plan to, to fight uh, climate change at the federal level. I promise you that. So any questions or comments uh, from the media or anybody? You know, I don't know exactly. I, I could get back to you later. Um, as, as I think somebody mentioned, um, I think people are more used to seeing them, you know, like on the parkway and the turnpike uh, and major highways. But you are starting to see more and more uh, in cities. Uh, but Asbury clearly took the lead on it in, in our area. But if you want me to, I can get back to you. We'll, uh, Matt? Then, Congressman, just to jump in there oh, real you quick. you know, maybe. Go yeah, ahead. I mean, the quick answer is not enough. Right. So there's not enough publicly available charging stations in New Jersey. Uh, the DP numbers on this, you can go, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, an app, an app and look at the charging stations around the state. There are, uh, you know, as of a year ago, there are about 600 publicly available charging stations. That number certainly has increased. But if we think of a state and nine million people, right, we need a charging station to be charging stations to be as publicly available as gas stations. And we certainly aren't there yet. So this is this is the beginning. Well, I, sh I forgot that I got all these experts here. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to rely on me to answer the questions. Anyone else? Any other questions? Yeah, if you want to. I don't think it doesn't seem like we have any other. Oh, you want to do it now? What, what's your question? Go ahead. Oh, I can answer that. I mean, look, um, the president. I understand the president is going to address the nation at twelve. Uh, and talk about the next steps. Um, but, I mean, we're not, su I'm not surprised. I mean, we've, uh, President Biden has been telling us for the last few weeks that this was going to happen. And, of course, he was trying very hard working with our NATO allies to, to prevent it. But it just seems like, um, you know, Putin is, you know, hell-bent on invading the, the Ukraine. And it's just really sad because um, it, it's going to be a huge amount of bloodshed. I mean, we already hear that with the invasion that the Ukrainians are fighting hard and, and uh, uh, to some extent have been, uh, you know, successful. I mean, obviously they're going to be outnumbered and, uh, you know, the main thing is the, 
is that the Russians have su superior aircraft and they're you know bombing and sending in missiles and so it's going to be tough for the Ukrainians to defend themselves but um, I think the answer is very severe sanctions you know uh, the president says that these, these sanctions are going to hurt Russia hurt their leaders hurt their economy and that's already happening there, there were reports this morning that the that the Russian stock market was near collapse and I'm going to be uh, very supportive of, of uh, the most severe sanctions as possible because I do believe um, that um, that ultimately um, you know this is going to be uh, this is going to newer this is going to really be punishing uh, to Russia um, and um, and over the long term the Ukrainians will fight for their freedom and will succeed it may not happen right now but they're not going to just sit around they're going to fight and and um, for being here I love you as you know I love being in Asbury and you, really, you guys are so innovative which is why we're here so thanks again what How about a picture you want to go uh, over there sure.